Okay, and welcome back. So for this problem here, it uses the last problem we did, and what we want to do is find the average velocity between t equal 1 and t equal 3 seconds. And we want to find the magnitude of the instantaneous velocity at t equal 2 seconds. Well, you guys remember from calculus class, if you were given a function that represents a curve, something like that, right? And if you were asked, you know, to find the derivative at, say, this particular point here, right? So you would actually find the derivative and then you construct your tangent line. Easy, right? And that comes out pretty accurate. Well, let's say you didn't know how to take the derivative. Instead, what you do is you take the average rate of change. So basically that means you were trying to find the slope at this particular point, but you didn't know how to take the derivative, right? You didn't know about that. So what you would do is you'd make two other points here, right? And you try to approximate what the slope is going to be. Well, as you draw the line through these two points here, you notice the slope is not the same, right? So you don't really get an exact answer. So that's, that's what it means to find the instantaneous velocity at a particular point, in this case here at two seconds. So let's start with this problem here. So V average, okay? So the velocity, the average velocity is nothing more than the difference between the two positions divided by the amount of time, right? So in this case here, it would just be r of the, it would be r evaluated at three seconds minus r evaluated at one second divided by three minus one. You guys know this from calculus, and if you don't, well, well, here it is right now. So let's figure out what r of three is going to be equal to. So r of three going to be, remember, I'm going to write the notation this way. I'm just going to write it as a column vector. You'll see why. It's it's no big deal. I mean, you're just going to plug in a 3 into here. There's nothing to plug into here. And you'll plug in a 3 into here. So when you plug a 3 into 9.6t, you get 28.8. .8. I guess maybe I should write this out, right? Okay, I'll go ahead and write it out for you guys. So this would be 9.60 times 3. And then there's nothing to plug into here. So it's just going to be 3.10. And then this one over here is going to have a negative 1. So this will be uh, negative 1 times 3 quantity squared. So this will be negative 1.00 times 3 quantity squared. Okay. And this is my first uh, vector here. And so this equals, well, if I multiply 9.6 times 3, I'll get 28.8. Okay. And then this doesn't change. This is just 3.10. And then this over here is just going to be a negative 9, right? See that? So now for r of 1, well, the same thing's going to apply. We're going to put a 1 in here, so this will be 9.60. I'm not even going to bother writing it twice. I'm just going to write, I'm just going to go ahead and evaluate this right here at 1, this at 1, this at 1. Again, this doesn't change. So this will be 3.10, and this right here will just be negative 1, right? Simple. Okay, so now this 3 minus 1 is 2 right here, right? So check this out. This is what I'm going to do. V average, you guys want to see something new, right? So check this out. You're going to take this right here and subtract from it this over here. So you'll end up with, see, now you'll see why I write this this way. 28.8, 3.1, oops, that's 3.10. And this will be negative 9 minus 9.60, 3.10, and a negative 1, right? And this is all over 2, right? So 3 minus 1 is 2. Okay. So this is going to equal, now check this out, 28.8 minus 9.16. That's going to give you a 19.2. Then you have 3.1 minus 3.1. Well, that's going to be 0. And then you have negative 1 minus minus 1, which is negative 9. That's just negative 8. Basic math stuff, I'm just going to fly through it because you guys are too good at that. And this is all over 2, right? So technically, you would write over 2, but we're not going to do that. We're going to put the 1 half in front of here. Yes, you can do it. Some of you are like, oh, I knew that already. Well, that's good. Some of you are like, wait a minute, what? That's fine. Maybe new to you guys, it's no big deal. But basically, what this turns out to be I guess, let me write it over here because I feel like I'll run out of space. Basically what this means, okay, I'm going to do this slowly. This right here, these these terms in this complete vector here, basically rep are represented, well, not this, not these particular numbers here, but I'm just saying my result 
is going to match the same position as everything here. So this top number here would be something over here. The second one is second one. Third one is third one. This is the same thing. So basically what this means is I have the one half and I have a 19.2 I hat and this would be a plus zero J hat and this would be a negative eight K hat, right? So this essentially is my average velocity, right? So this would be the average velocity in the X direction, in the Y direction, and the Z direction. What we want to find out is what is the average velocity, period, right? So this, we haven't really found it yet. This is just, we're just calculating the, essentially what we're doing is we're calculating the, the individual components, right? So if I was to, actually, you know, I should continue this. One half times this, one half times that, one half times that. And so this will end up being 9.6 i hat. Uh, I'll just go ahead and write it out because at least that way you guys can see it. You wouldn't write this zero j hat. You just leave it blank, right? You would just continue writing it as 8k hat, right? So technically your answer would look something like this. Your v uh, average would be 96 I hat minus 8K hat, right? Some people don't like that. Some people want to see this in here. So that's why I'm writing it that way, okay? So what you need to do now is find the magnitude of this, right? So if you don't mind, I am going to just write it over here, right? To do it all on one page. So the average, so the average, the magnitude of the average velocity, I guess I should have wrote that this way. So this would be average. Well, that's going to be equal to the square root of each one of these terms squared, right? So I'm going to have 9.6 quantity squared and essentially plus negative 8 quantity squared. Okay. And this will be the square root. Okay. And I'm going to move all this around a little bit. And voila, we have more space. Okay, so this right here, when you evaluate this, you're going to end up with 10.4 meters per second, okay? Yeah, so don't forget, the whole thing was in meters, actually. This this position here, I guess I, guess I could have written this as meters. No biggie. Okay, so that takes care of this right here, but now we want to figure out what's the magnitude... Uh, of the instantaneous velocity at t equal two seconds. Okay, well, we'll need another page for that, but this will be pretty simple. So we'll get rid of this right here. So let's write down the original vector. Perfect. And for our velocity vector, we ended up with this. And this was all meters. I guess I should put this in meters again here. Okay, so all we have to do for this right here is evaluate at two seconds, right? So let's see. So V of 2 is equal to, well, this doesn't change. So this will be 9.60 I hat. And forget the J hat, there's nothing there. And then we plug in a 2 into here, right? So this ends up being negative 4, right? Because if I plug a 2 into here, I get a 4. This will be K hat, right? There we go. Okay, so to get the magnitude of the velocity vector evaluated at 2, basically, so this is going to end up being the square root of 9.60 quantity squared plus negative 4 quantity squared. And for this problem here, we actually get the same thing again, right? So you guys are probably wondering, well, hold on a second. Didn't you say earlier that the slopes wouldn't be the same? So therefore, technically, you wouldn't have exactly the same answer because the velocity would be a little bit different, right? Meaning the rate of change would be a little bit different. Okay, so here's, here's what you're going to discover about this. Notice that in the first problem, remember the acceleration? So check this out. Let me do it again. See this velocity here? We're going to differentiate that. Okay, so we're going to do ddt of the velocity vector, right? And that gives us the acceleration, right? And that gives us the acceleration vector. And so that comes out to be zero for this. Because we differentiate this, we'll get a zero. So that's going to be zero i hat. Differentiate this, we're going to get what? Zero j hat. And then we differentiate this over here, we're going to get a two k hat, right? So notice this. 
Acceleration is constant. So what does that mean exactly? Well, let me show you something on the next page. I took the liberty of doing this ahead of time just for those of you that are not convinced about the answer. So we were given this. This is the position vector. We found number two when we found number three. Okay, let's ignore these for a second. Take a look at this. Usually you're dealing with a quadratic equation, right? This would be like our f of x equal x squared, right? Like this right here. Then when we take the derivative of this, we end up with f prime of x, right? This is our velocity function. So it looks something like this if we graph it, right? And then our constant acceleration is this right here, which I'm not even going to bother drawing it because you guys know what this looks like. What we're interested in is this function here and this function here. Real quick, okay, I'm going to try to make this as fast as possible. When you take the position function, you evaluate it at two different times. So in this case here, we'll evaluate something at one second and then at three seconds. If you subtract the two distances, you end up with, well, if you take subtract the two heights, you'll end up with this displacement here. This is my, my delta x. This delta x is the same as the area here in the velocity function, right? So I guess maybe it would help if I wrote that as the velocity function. So this would be my velocity function, and this would be my position function. So I'll call this my x of t, and this is my v of t function, right? Okay, so the area here is equal to the distance here, right? So let's just plug in some numbers. So what we had was f of 3 seconds minus f of 1, okay? We're using this function, actually. So if you take x, uh, x squared function, right, and evaluate it at 3, you'll get a 9. Minus 1 is 1. Well, minus 1 squared is 1. And this is all over the interval, 3 minus 1, which is equal to 2. So you subtract 9 minus 1, you get 8 over 2 is equal to 4, okay? So we did this. We took the time... At this, evaluated at 1, took the time evaluated at 3, and we took the average, well, we took the average uh, velocity, and we found that it was equal to 4, right? So now we're going to take the derivative, right, which is the velocity, and we're going to evaluate it at 2, which is in between the two other times, right? Well, look, we get 4 as well. And so if you're still not convinced, let's just pick two other numbers, right? Let's just say 10 seconds and 8 seconds, right? So... 10 squared is 100, 8 squared is 64, 10 minus 8 is going to be 2. And so that gives you 18, right? So here's 8 and 10, and if you take a number between, if you take the number between and you evaluate that in the derivative, well, you're going to end up with 18, right? So this should kind of help clear stuff up. So you may have to sleep on this because this really is a concept in math, especially when you start studying about the fundamental theorem of calculus you're going to have to sleep on this a little bit because this is basically the relationship between uh, integral and differential calculus. So with that said, let's go back to the other screen. So this is the same thing over here. When the acceleration is constant, then yeah, you're going to get the same thing. In this case here, we're looking at the magnitude of the instantaneous uh, velocity at a certain time. And if we're looking at the average velocity between two different times and the instantaneous is in between the two well yeah we're going to we're going to end up with uh we're going to end up with the same results right so this 10.4 meters per second is going to be the same as the the average velocity okay so this is a little bit longer than i expected but i think you guys get the idea this is kind of more for you guys to discover this problem was actually set up for you guys to experiment and question why now i'm explaining why the simple answer is this, because the acceleration was constant. That's why this worked out the way it did. You see, acceleration is constant, 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 constant. I don't like repeating myself, but the reason why I kind of do that for some of these tutorials is because sometimes things don't click right away, right? Unless If you say them a certain way or if, if I only say it one way. So if I say it a, a couple of different ways, one of them will trigger you know, the understanding of one person and then saying it a different way will trigger the understanding of a different person. And saying it both of those ways doesn't trigger anything in, a, in the third person. And then that person actually doesn't get it right away. They'll wake up the next morning and then one of the two ways that I said it, their brain will basically take the two and 
make connections to something else, and then they'll be like, oh, I get it, you see? So even if you don't get this right away, I don't expect everybody to get this right away. Just sleep on it. Trust me, when you sleep on this stuff, you wake up, you know, half an hour later or the next day, this will all make more sense. And if it still doesn't, if it still doesn't make any sense, well, then sleep on it some more or watch this again, and then it'll make sense then. Okay, for now, that's the end of it. So what we're going to do is move on to the last problem. And if this is all you needed, well, in that case, you know, as always, guys, good luck with your homework and tests in the future, and thank you for watching.